Hello, this is Thomas, K4SWL. If you're new here, I like to do real-time, real-life amateur radio field activation videos. You've been watching my channel for very long, you'll know this is not a very typical introduction. Uh, normally I'm already in the field uh, at a park or something, and or on the summit and doing an activation. Uh, today I'm doing something a little different. Basically, um, you may know that my activations are never terribly long because, um, and they're usually what I call impromptu activations because I'm fitting them in my family schedule. And that's exactly what I'm doing today. This is an impromptu activation, did not plan to do this, but I actually had my full uh, radio kit in the car uh, in my backpack, so I brought it up to the front of the car and I realized I have an opening of about 30 minutes. That's all today to do an activation. And I'm talking setup and everything. So I thought, well, <laughs> I, was, I, uh, I stopped, stopped the car, uh, parked in a little parking lot, spotted myself, uh, or not spotted myself, but scheduled the activation uh, so that hopefully the reverse beacon network will pick me up because the park I'm going to doesn't have the best cell phone service in the world. And so it's a good chance that I may not be able to get a signal to spot myself there. So. Um, today, um, I'm going to Zebulon Vance birthplace um, and uh, doing an activation there. It is um, a beautiful day, as you can see, but kind of wet, and we've been having really heavy showers move through the area, uh, And uh, but it's pretty pleasant. It's actually not very cold today. I think right now it's around 55 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, so pretty respectable. Um, in terms of radio and antenna, I'm limited because I, I don't have my regular radio box in the car where I keep a few different radios and things uh, for this sort of thing. I just have my regular radio pack and I have my Elecraft KX2 uh, with an internal battery. The, this particular park, Zebulon Vance, there's really only one really good spot to set up there, in my opinion, unless you want to set up in your car. And that's because it's a historic site and they have some old log cabins and things like that there and i don't ever want to set up anywhere around them that's more like the archaeological part of the site uh, but they do have a really good picnic shelter and every time i've been there i've just activated from that picnic shelter thing is it's not the best place to actually string up an antenna um, for just a really quick antenna thing they there is a line of trees next to the shelter that i can put a uh, throw line through but it's just not ideal. It's awfully close to the building, and um, it's just a little, just a little awkward there. Uh, it's also flanked by a um, by farmland, and I can't go on the farmland. So what I normally do is one of two things: I either deploy one of my uh, portable verticals, like the Impasse Light or the Chelligans MC750. I would do that today too. Now that I have one of those, or I use my AX1, uh, my little tiny AX1 antenna, and that's what I'm going to use today: is my AX1. Also, in the past, I have used a tree. There's like a dead tree there that I've thrown a line through and used some of my longer wire antennas, and that works fine. But I don't want to do that today. Um, I really do want to keep this short. In fact, I don't really have... I do have a 40-meter in-fed half wave, but I don't want to spend the time doing that, and the ground's going to be saturated there in that particular spot where I'd have to set it up. So we're just going to use the AX1, and hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> in, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes on the air? I don't know how long I'll actually have on the air. Hopefully... Um, I'll validate the activation and maybe this will be a way that um, I can share with you really the full experience of uh, you know the full setup of the X1 I think I've done that before in other videos uh, so um, yeah not a not a big deal but I have to leave here and then go pick up my daughters uh, they're at a meeting and um, uh, with some other students and stuff and uh, they're gonna rely on their dad being there on time to pick them up so I can't be late also if someone is in the shelter today using it, I may just almost abandon it. I don't know. I'd have to kind of feel it out and see. I don't want to interrupt a group that's meeting there or anything like that, but I'm hoping this time of day, it's a little late in the day for a school group to be there. Maybe I'll be all right. And we're coming up to it now, actually. And we'll pick up the camera here. We're going to look off to the side and see if there's anybody at the shelter. And there isn't. Yay. Okay, good. Good. So we should be good now. I'm going to pull in and, uh, and we can get this thing set up and actually do a little quick activation. I have no idea what propagation is like today, by the way. It has been all over the place lately. We've had flaring and all kinds of other things going on. 
So who knows what propagation will be like, uh, but we'll find out uh, soon enough. So um, let me get parked over here and I'll be ready to go. Let's see, this is a good place right here. Okay, I need to grab a few things here in the car. Grab my phone just in case I need it. I do not think, I think to save time, I'm not gonna try to do hammers today. I'm just gonna do logging on my notepad. This is the front of the building here. They have a nice visitor center here. It's a really pretty site, actually. But it bumps right up against this farmland. Oh, they do have picnic tables here now. I don't, I don't know if those have been there before, but not exactly ideal. I, I wouldn't want to string an antenna up in that. And those are some of the old uh, log cabins of this Civil War era North Carolina governor. But I do like this. We have done all kinds of things out here at this uh, little picnic shelter. As you can see, it's there are trees around it, but they're kind of clustered really closely together. I feel like I'd have to walk out there to throw the line across. There are some over here too, but it's right up against the building. I just prefer here. In the past, I've used this old dead tree over here to hold up uh, the end of like a long random wire antenna or a 40 meter infed half wave or something. And I bring it in here uh, into the uh, shelter. This time, I'm just not going to bother setting it up. As you can see, it is super wet. We have had some downpours. And that area over there is crazy, crazy marshy <laughs> feeling when you step on it. So, let's see. Where should I set? I'm going to set up right here, mainly because this looks pretty dry. Is this dry? This is dry. Okay, let's get set up. Sorry about all this camera movement, but there's no way around that. What I brought with me is just my regular pack here. So I'm going to grab my need both hands to do this. Grab my um, KX2 out. Grab my AX1. Grab my logging. Okay, let's set this thing up. First of all, I get the uh, KX2 out, of course. Set this guy up. I hope someone's timing me. I'm not killing myself to do it. Yeah, you know, I forgot to actually include a logbook in here now, but um, I'm not gonna kill myself doing this, but I, see, I need to get my glasses out to make sure I get the right, get the right uh, counterpoise wire. Everybody asked about this. This is a Maxpedition Fatty pouch. Let's see, this is the 13 foot one. That's the one for a need for 20 meters. What I try to do when I can remember is connect to counterpoise first. It's easier to do it without having the antenna on. And let's take this and throw it out there right now. And then I go over here on the side of the KX2, I loosen this lug right here and I put it under here where it's designed to actually take a little counterpoise. Makes a nice ground connection to the chassis. There we go. I do love my KX2. Okay, now I'm just going to stretch out this counterpoise wire to make sure that it's actually out of full 13 feet here. It's such a short counterpoise. It's amazing how well this works. Or that it works at all, I should say. Okay. Now let's grab the rest of the antenna parts. So I only need this base unit plus a whip because I'm not operating on 40 meters. And let me check here. I need to make sure this is set to the um, 20 meter position on the switch. So that is the lower position. It shows there in this bipod. I think my bipod's starting to wear out. I've used this thing so much. I do think it's starting to wear out a bit. I may have to replace it. Today is what, the 17th of January? I have read that Elecraft is kind of being forced to raise their prices. Again, just due to parts and everything. 
and okay I'm extending the whip now there we go you can see the whip it's really pretty here today I've got to remember to take some photos I'll probably forget because I'm in such a hurry today we'll see and close this back up I don't need that now I will grab an external key I'll use my little um, C.W. Morris SP4, which is one of my favorite little portable paddles. Make sure we got some power here. Grab my logbook. We are on 20 meters. I'm hoping I do this whole thing on 20 meters today. That would be the goal. Grab my pen. Grab my logbook. Set up my logbook. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. I'm hearing something. Let's try 61.5. That's where I got that right now. Now, please remind me to take photos because I always do a link below to qrpeer.com where I have a full field report for each activation. I'll do one for this one as well. So let's see. Uh, Zebulon. Vance. Oh, I've got to look up that park number. I haven't done this one in a while and I can't remember it off the top of my head here. Let's see. Um, it is K6856. I mainly need to know that if someone, if I work a park to park or someone else asks for that. Today is the 17th of January, 2023. This is going to be 20 meters CW, and it's 1,400 hours right now, so 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 1,900 hours UTC. And uh, let's see, I'm going to put KX2 AX1 here, and I always set the power, whoops, what did I just do? Yeah, set the power to 5 watts, which is how I always operate. And let's hit the ATU button. One to one, excellent. I'm gonna start calling CQ. I have no time to waste right now. It's the reason I'm doing this so quickly. And while it's calling CQ, I will take a picture. Or two or three. I hate having a post where I don't have um, you know, a photo involved in it. I, I do like photos in my posts. Okay, come on. Somebody answer my call. It's so much easier not to log with my phone on the side when I'm in a hurry. We're going to find out now if the propagation's any good. <laughs> Yay! They came up. Yeah, we've got some QSP today. 
I maybe need to slow down a little bit here. Oh, very good. 599. Tennessee. Oh, wait, okay, it's K3E, yes. Iowa, not bad. I'll get K3ES here. Good strong signal, Brian. Brian has some excellent posts he puts on QRPR. 429. Okay, so a little weak. I put IR, I was like, what's IR? He was going really quickly, so I went really quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When I get there.
Just two more for a valid activation. Good job. Keep going. Okay, five, two, nine. Excellent. <laughs> Good job. Illinois. So you can see the logbook better. Valid activation. Thank you, AX1. You never let me down. Lots of New York stations.
hear that fading. Wow, it's deep. Listen to that. Okay, let's see. I just got a text from my daughters, and I've got some extra time. I don't have to cut it out right now. <laughs> nice. Nevada. Great to get you in logs. PA, ba 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 ba. <laughs> Okay, wait. Was that a C I heard, or maybe it was? 
I'll try again. lot of logs to transcribe when I get back. So um, what I was saying earlier is I just got a message from my daughters that the meeting's running behind, so I've got a little extra time. Uh, maybe 10 minutes more? Okay. So I'm giving them a signal report based on the when the signal was high because there's QSB here I is fading away and he'll come back up again
Okay, so it's E. He's fading away. Check this text message real quick. So my buddy Alan here, W2AEW, who I just worked, sent me a text with a picture of what he just used to contact me, a TR45L. <laughs> CQ here and we'll need to pop off. But yeah, this is Alan. I don't know if you can see this on the camera or not. Whoops. He's using a TR45L working me and it was just like what five stations ago? Can I get you? Can't hear them. Oh man, they just faded away.
You know what? I'm gonna call QRT right now. Does it sound like anybody's there? I'm hearing a little. Okay, we'll turn this off now. Wow, <laughs> this was something else. So, so what happened was, um, Alan, by the way, I should finish uh, uh, saying this. So yeah, Alan worked me with his TR45L using the same key I'm using here right now, which is really cool. It's not often that I even have the wherewithal to check text messages while I'm doing um, you know, an activation, but I did today because I was expecting one for my daughters, which I got actually telling me that I've got a little more time than I thought I did. Uh, which is really, really nice. Um, so uh, let's see, how many stations did we get here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Wow, 28 in 25 minutes. <laughs> Man, this is just incredible someday. So what I would have done, by the way, had I not got that text from my daughters, I would have probably quit somewhere around here, around the 35 mark. Um, I would have probably quit there, but I was able to almost double my activation by doing this, uh, which is kind of fun because I actually worked some stations. I mean, worked Nevada here. This is the thing. I'm going to spend, let's see how much time I've got. I've got about three minutes to tell you. <laughs> People ask me all the time about the AX1, all the time. I get questions about this all the time because I think I do so many activations with it. Um, usually little activations like this where I'm short of time, I just need to do something really quickly, and um, it's very convenient and very easy to use. For things like Parks on the Air and Soda, if you live in most of the United States, I'd say that you're going to be golden with this antenna. It's going to work for you. If you live in an area where within your 20 meter footprint, if you're on 20 meters or 17 meter footprint or 40 meter in, uh, footprint, if you're in an area where you really don't have a lot of ham density in those areas, see like I was hitting all the way from Florida, the mid-Atlantic states a little bit, out in the Ohio Valley, all the way out to Nevada, um, a lot of like New York and, and sort of that um, New England-ish area up there. Um, I was able to work all these things um, from this antenna, and they are all within my normal propagation footprint. If and and the the AX1 antenna I find works a normal footprint plus a little bit of a close footprint, so sort of like a Nivis antenna would, an NVIS. For example, I worked what was it? Tennessee was one of my first states over here. Normally, with a twenty meter, if I had a twenty meter. Um, uh, in fact, half wave up, I probably would not hit Tennessee. It'd probably go straight over them. But I think there's just something about the dynamics of a compromised antenna like this that opens it up. Now, am I going to work Sirius DX? Sometimes I do. In fact, it was it was here. It was sitting like right there at that table or that table. <laughs> I worked hungry one year. Same setup. It was last year. Same setup. Five watts. And I mean, it was a good enough communication that he asked me what county I was in because he was a county hunter, and I worked him. Now, he had really good ears, really good antennas on his end, but I still was able to do it and still made it work, and it was just wonderful. Um, so does the AX1 work? Heck yeah, it works. Are you going to have a easy time working a D-Expedition with this antenna? Absolutely. You're going to have a difficult time <laughs> working a D-Expedition with this because this is a bit of a pea shooter. It's just a really small antenna. But when you're the DX, when you're activating, it works fine, especially in CW. Now, in single sideband, I have gotten reports from people. I haven't done a lot of single sideband with my AX1, to be honest. Uh, but I've gotten reports from people saying that some days when the propagation was good, they did beautifully with it. Other days when propagation was poor, they only got like a couple of stations and couldn't complete their activation. Because probably single sideband has like, you know, it's probably... 80% less efficient than CW. I don't know. I don't know what those numbers would be. It's just way less efficient. You're not able to use as much of your energy to, you know, send a signal out there. Uh, you know, it's just wider band than CW. Now, before I forget, I'm going to turn on my radio and take a few more shots of my stuff here because you're going to stay with me as I pack up here right now. Um, and if I don't take my shots, I will regret it later. Um, for me, it's very important to have like a little bit of a photo documentation of what went on uh, when I do an activation, as you know. <laughs> In case you're wondering if I edit my videos, you'll see, just like a lot of my other videos, there's nothing edited here. Usually when I edit my videos, it is strictly uh, because I need to edit an intro separately because I've got like a 
separate audio recorder for my audio or something like that. That happens from time to time. Um, not super often, but it does happen. Let's see how quickly I can put this up. Now I'm hoping someone's timed me here. I'm really curious how quickly I got out, how quickly I packed up when I started packing up. Because I really was going to use this as a little bit of an exercise to see just how quickly I could do a deployment and take everything and put it back up if I could actually get an activation done in that time. And I did. I did. I was able to manage that. But I was able to do a little bit more. So I'm happy I was able to stay. So I think what I'll do when I prepare this video, now what I do with my um, counterpoise, is I roll it in a little figure eight like this. And it fits in the bag. Just fine. There we go. Now it won't tangle when I pull it back out. Where did I put my bag? Here it is. Put it in my little Elecraft AX1 bag. There we go. There's the counterpoise. Push the air out. Seal it. Put it back in my pouch. My pouch has everything in here. Sorry, I'm, I know you're hearing a lot of camera noise here. Close that up. my logs up and my log pack this actually has more than my logs in it to be honest this has also my recorder some extra paddles some other things in here extra lead I don't need this much stuff in here but because I do videos and active you know field reports and stuff I do want to have a little extra um, supplies there we go Put the KX1 or KX2 up so when people ask me, could I get an AX-1 and then go, you know, use it, take it on an airplane, travel somewhere, and then do activations? Heck yeah, you can. All you need is this and this. In fact, I could put this entire antenna in here if I really wanted to. This has a lot of space set up in it. So you can see how quickly I just packed that up. And that's not even really rushing. But I actually have a full antenna and a throw line in here right now. Plus there's a key in here. I mean, I, everything's in here that I need except for a mic, but the mic's built into this. So you don't even have to take a separate mic with you. I've done activations without using a mic at all. And then I put my KX2 back up in the pack here. And let's put the AX1 down there below it. There we go. Pull this out just a little bit. And throw this in here. I have extra things in here you wouldn't normally have, like a tripod and all kinds of goodies like that. You wouldn't need that. And my top pack over here is open, uh, top pouch, because that's where I put my camera once this camera goes up. Sorry, you couldn't see all that necessarily, but that's it. It's packed up, ready to go. I'm ready to go grab my daughters now, <laughs> pick them up. Take them on to the next place as I'm acting like a little bit of a dad taxi today. But anyway, give you one quick look over here. Zebulon Vance, this, this is a really nice park. If you come out here to uh, the Asheville area, I'd highly encourage you to come out here and do an activation. It's a really pretty area. Um, always pleasant. Always have a fun time doing an activation here. Great place for a picnic. I will tell you, though, sometimes on weekends it gets super busy here, like on a Saturday or Sunday, because people come out here and do birthday parties and things. During the week, if you're going in the middle of the day, you can come out here and find a whole school group out here. And there just isn't a lot of other places to set up. Now, if you've got a mobile set up in your car, no problem. And I have, I think, maybe one time before, very early in the days of POTA, I came out here and this was occupied and I stuck my impasse light out there and did a little activation once by my car, but I don't like doing that. Okay, better say goodbye now. It is definitely time to pick up my daughters and a little bit beyond. It'll be okay. Thank you so much for joining me today. Actually, what I'm gonna do is grab my pack and just take you back to the car. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm glad you enjoy this sort of thing. And if you feel like it, you can like and subscribe. I never even really say to do that. Of course you can if you want to. If you don't want to, don't do it. There are better YouTube channels out there. <laughs> but uh, please look at my uh, field report that goes along with this because I put a lot of time into those with extra photos, as you know, because I shot those photos with you there. And uh, just extra information about some of the setup, links to gear, all that good stuff. Man, this turned into a really pretty day. It's been gray and overcast and we've had these big clouds move through and dump rain on us. It's looking really nice right now though. 
I really do like it. Fortunately out here, now one thing I have to tell you about, if you're ever operating near farmland, and especially if they've got a fence up, that can be bad news. It can be an electric fence. And if you're setting up anywhere near an electric fence, besides the fact you need to keep your antenna away from it, if you're setting up near an electric fence, they can really inject a lot of popping. Uh, so, and that's never very fun. And let's see, let me put my bag up. Whoops, that locket, I did lock it. I'm in a habit of locking my car now because of bears. <laughs> As I told you last year, a bear got in my car and really messed it up um, at my house. Um, okay, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you get a chance to go out and play a little radio. Enjoy the outdoors. And until next time, take care, treat others with kindness, and seven threes.